From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the pastor of St. Margaret of Scotland Parish here in Toronto, Father Andy Macbeth. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Creston, British Columbia. This Mass is offered for her special intentions. Our thanks to our donor in Creston, British Columbia for making it possible for thousands of the faithful across Canada to begin a new week with this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our need for God's healing and forgiveness. And so we pray, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them or they will increase and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Bitham, and Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. The word of the Lord. The torrent would have gone over us. 
Then over us would have gone the raging waters. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as prey to their teeth. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord. for justice sake for the kingdom of heaven is theirs alleluia 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 the lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, a disciple is not above the teacher, Jesus said to his disciples, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword, for I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now, when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in their cities. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord Identity, direction, and meaning are not an option, but a necessity. Identity, direction, and meaning are not an option, but a necessity. Today, more than ever, we need to prove our identity. To open a bank account, to get a passport, to travel to another country, you now have to prove your identity. It's not an option, it's a necessity. In our history, this seems to be something new, especially since 9-11. However, humanity from the beginning of time seems to have been searching for the answers to the basic questions of identity. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? Those of us who have been around for a while will remember fondly and probably by memory the Baltimore Catechism answer to the question, why did God make us? 
The answer, to know, love, and serve him in this world and to be with him forever in the next. Because we are Judeo-Christians, we know our identity. For God has told us through the prophet Ezekiel, you will be my people and I will be your God. This identity gave the Israelites, we read about in the first reading, the ability to withstand their suffering and hardships in the form of the oppressive tasks imposed on them by the Egyptians. In spite of the ruthless pain and suffering imposed on them, their knowledge and belief that God was with them empowered them to persevere and continue. Why? Because they knew that this was not from God and God was with them and had more in store for them than the here and now. This direction gave them the meaning on which they could build their hope. We, God's people, today face different and difficult challenges personally and collectively. As individuals, we struggle with the burden of sickness, stress, and sometimes the overwhelming responsibilities to family and friends. And as a human family, we are challenged to announce, proclaim, and make real the kingdom of God in an ever-increasing secular world. This will never be an easy task, as there are some who at this very moment are being persecuted because of their belief and decision to be disciples of Jesus Christ. In spite of the difficulties and hardships any of us have to face, we can find courage in the words of Jesus, those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Discipleship means much more than merely saying, I am a Christian. Just as Jesus sent out the apostles to proclaim the good news and take up their cross and follow him, so too we have our mission to be his witnesses to a world searching for meaning. Like the apostles, we can only accomplish our tasks if we are open to the graces God wants to give to us to carry out our mission through our words and our actions. Understanding the will of God requires patience and humility. The burdens of life do take their toll and often cause us to worry. But worry doesn't empty tomorrow of its suffering, it empties today of its strength. That's why we come to the Eucharist time and time again to be nourished by God's word and sacrament as God's people. As the psalm today states, our help is in the name of the Lord. This awareness can empower us to continue on faithfully, carrying our own unique pain and suffering, brokenness and woundedness, knowing that God has more in store for us than the here and now. How well are we doing since making bricks is no longer part of our job description? Well, one way to find out is to ask ourselves the popular question that was circulating around in the 1960s and 70s. If it was a crime to be a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? The tragedy is that in some places right now, it is indeed considered a crime to be a Christian. We are fortunate to have the freedom that we do have to believe, live and celebrate our faith. But nevertheless, we still need to give evidence to the fact that we are indeed disciples of the risen Lord. Our evidence, our witness will only come when we strive to remain faithful to our commitment to make the loving presence of God a reality through our words and actions in our relationships and responsibilities each day. So let us pray in this Eucharist for a greater awareness of our identity so we can know that we need to, what we need to do to be faithful to our call as God's people and the Lord's disciples. Why? Because identity, direction, and meaning are not an option, but a necessity. I invite you to stand now as we have our prayers of the faithful. Our God is a loving Father who is always open to our needs. We now place our petitions before him with trust. For migrants and refugees around the world, forced to leave their homelands, 
that nations will provide them with the necessities of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ, that they will be given protection and courage as they live out their discipleship, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all God's people, that as the Lord's disciples, we will give faith-filled witness through our words and actions, let us pray to the Lord. For those confined to home or institutions, that they know the healing and loving presence of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. And for all the personal and private intentions we now place before our God. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, guide and nourish us on our journey of faith with hearts and minds always open to your will and ways. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Brother and Mr, this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, a fruit of the vine and a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and kind of hands, we shall pray you, Lord, may our sacrifices be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles, Venerable Mary Ward, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, bring us to the last in life.
With those of you at home, join with me in this admonition of St. Augustine. Therefore, once and for all, this short command is given to you. Love and do what you will. If you keep silent, keep silent by love. If you speak, speak by love. If you correct, correct by love. If you pardon, pardon by love. Let love be rooted in you, and from the root, nothing but good can grow. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you make us shares of his divine nature who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1 888 Imagine a CD with 25 of your favorite hymns from the past six missions. These 25 hymns will take you out of yourself and for a time at least put you in the presence of God. And he will bring 